live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this scenario. Suppose you have a brother who is playing in the National Football League. Your brother is living out his dream and is playing at the highest level of professional football. You have a good relationship with your brother, and during the summer before the season starts, you're making a trip to visit him and get together. And what starts out as a family reunion of sorts, and what starts out as just a simple get-together, somehow winds up with you, completely out of nowhere, getting an NFL contract. You never intended to play in the NFL. In fact, football was the last thing on your mind. And somehow, at the end of your visit, you wind up getting a chance in the league. It's a story that seems completely made up. It seems too good to be true and seems like a really bad and really cheesy Hollywood movie. But the crazy part about all this is that back in 1983, this actually happened. In 1983, the New England Patriots had a running back on their team named Robert Weathers. For some reason, when Robert met up with his brother Clarence, they decided to sign him and reunite the family. And the crazy move, against all odds, actually worked out. This is the story behind the crazy signing of Clarence Weathers. Before I talk about the signing itself, we need some context to understand just who Clarence Weathers is, and why he was visiting Massachusetts in the first place, because it will help us to understand just how truly crazy this story is. Heck, it might even be up there with Al Davis drafting a player simply because he saw him running around in a gym, or the Minnesota Vikings drafting a player simply because they saw him throwing a football on the sidelines and liked the way he threw the ball. So that raises the question, just who is Clarence Weathers, and how did he slip through the cracks in the first place to the point where an insane scenario like this could even play out? Well, he began his collegiate career at Delaware State, and joined the Hornets for the 1980 season. Almost immediately, he made an impact on special teams. On September 6, 1980, in the team's first game of the season and in Weathers' first game, he had a 95-yard punt return. To this day, that play is the school record for the longest punt return. Later in the season, in a November game against Central State, he had a 100-yard kickoff return, which to this day is the school record for the longest kickoff return. As a freshman, Weathers set the school records in both of these categories, and still holds them. That season, Weathers had 758 kickoff return yards, which was a single-season school record for 20 years before DeShane Dennis surpassed it in 2000. And after just one season, Weathers held the school record for career kickoff return yards. He had a great freshman season, where he was recognized as an All-MEAC selection, becoming the only Delaware State player that season to be named to the All-MEAC first team and just the second Delaware State kick returner ever to receive this honor. After a fantastic freshman season, how would Weathers follow that up? Well, unfortunately, he wouldn't. He dropped out after his freshman year, and even though he tried to get back in, he couldn't. Instead of withdrawals, he got Fs, and was a college dropout after just one year. I couldn't find anything as to why he dropped out, but whatever the case was, his potentially promising career looked all but over. With that, he began working a construction job down in Florida building mini golf courses. Keep in mind that he went to high school down in Florida at Fort Pierce Westwood. He still played football on the side, playing in a touch football league to keep busy and keep active, but he hadn't played tackle football since his freshman year before he dropped out. However, entering the 1983 NFL season, amazingly enough, that was about to change. The player you're looking at right here is Clarence's brother. This is Robert Weathers. Unlike Clarence, Robert did not slip under the radar whatsoever. He went to Arizona State and played four seasons there routinely finishing near the top of the Pac-10 in yards per attempt. And with the Patriots wanting some help with their running game, as Sam Cunningham was on the wrong side of 30, was on the verge of retirement, and had declined significantly since his glory days in the 1970s, New England decided to use their second-round pick in the 1982 NFL Draft on Robert Weathers. He didn't do a whole lot during that strike short in 1982 season, as he only ran the ball 24 times for 83 yards and a touchdown, but the Pats were still pretty high on him. Prior to restarting his construction job down in Florida, Clarence was going to head up to Massachusetts for some family business. This was supposed to be just a quick pit stop. Clarence had another brother who was 15 years old and was about to start school, so he wanted to be there for him when he was starting up. On top of that, he was going to house sit for a bit for Robert. This trip was just about Clarence being a good brother and wanting to help out and be there for his family. There were zero NFL aspirations whatsoever from this trip. Again, Clarence hadn't played tackle football in three years, and he knew that his odds of playing in the NFL were so slim that they might as well be zero. However, Clarence wanted to get a workout in with Robert. They were just going to toss a ball around. The only difference? This toss around not only involved an NFL player, but somehow involved a Patriots coach. Patriots offensive coordinator Lou Erber happened to be passing by when he saw Robert and Clarence working out together. And Erber noticed something. He noticed that Clarence was catching everything. 
he noticed that Clarence had really good speed, had really good hands, and might have what it takes to perform at the next level. After the workout, Herbert met with team personnel to rave about Robert's younger brother, and to figure out if they could pull this off to make sure that he was eligible. And on July 19th, right as Clarence was set to leave Massachusetts, he was offered an NFL contract. What started as just a family get-together turned into a chance to live out his NFL dreams. Now, it was time for Clarence to make it onto the actual roster. Clarence Weathers was in training camp and was the feel-good story to root for. How could you not root for a guy like this, who went from dropping out of college and building mini-golf courses to now playing in the NFL? But he had to make the team, and that was going to be tough. As head coach Ron Myers said, I don't know if we can find a spot for him. On paper, the Patriots were pretty loaded at wide receiver when it came to guys who were guaranteed roster spots. Stanley Morgan, arguably the greatest receiver in Patriots history, had led the league in yards per catch in three of the past four seasons, and made the Pro Bowl twice in that stretch as well. He was obviously making the team. In the 1983 NFL Draft, they spent two high draft picks on receivers, taking Tennessee wide receiver Darrell Wilson in the second round and McNeese State wide receiver Steven Starring in the third round. They also drafted another receiver inside the top 300 out of Abilene Christian named Steve Parker. They had Cedric Jones, their third-round pick from the year before who was set to make a bigger impact as a second-year player. They had Morris Bradshaw, a nine-year veteran who was on Oakland's roster for both of their Super Bowl wins at the time. And they had a few other returning players on the fringe. It was going to be an uphill climb for Weathers to have any shot at pulling this off. However, the Patriots knew that he had talent. Myers said that despite the roster uncertainty, that he thought he was really impressive. Defensive back Rick Sanford said that excluding Morgan, Weathers was the best receiver in camp. And that's high praise from Sanford, who was a former first-round pick and had been in the league for quite a few seasons by this point. And when cuts were made, one by one, Weathers survived. He thought he didn't have a shot at making it. As he later said, mentally, my bags were packed. I was ready to go back and get my construction job or maybe wait for the NFL. He was thinking about joining the Army. Fortunately for him, he didn't have to, because when the final cuts were announced, Weathers was on the team. He was in disbelief, saying that this whole thing was like a dream come true and was the equivalent to winning the Super Bowl. Against all odds, Clarence Weathers was somehow now in the NFL. And as it turns out, he absolutely belonged there. Remember what Sanford said about Weathers probably being the second best receiver on the team behind Stanley Morgan? He wasn't kidding. In 1983, Weathers was probably the number two guy behind Morgan. New England didn't have a great passing offense that season, as combined with the mediocre play of Steve Grogan and the poor play of rookie Tony Eason, they finished 21st out of 28 teams in passing touchdowns and 25th in passing yards. But Weathers was a bright spot, as he caught 19 passes for 379 yards and 3 touchdowns. In fact, there was one game on November 6th against the Buffalo Bills where Weathers had 2 catches for 98 yards and 2 touchdowns, as New England won 21-7. That was a big win for the Patriots, as it brought them to 5-5, five five, keeping them right in the thick of things for the postseason. And it would not have been possible without the play of Weathers. After the 1983 season, the Pats signed him to a three-year contract extension. General Manager Patrick Sullivan said that Weathers wholeheartedly deserved the extension, as he did quite a few things in 1983 to impress the team. While an injury kept him out for the first half of the season, when he came back midway through in a game against the Miami Dolphins, he picked up right where he left off, as even though the Pats lost to Dan Marino's high-flying team by a final score of 44-24, in the first half, Weathers scored on a 14-yard touchdown pass from Tony Eason. Unfortunately for Weathers, this is where his Pats career would come to an end. As midway through the season, Ron Meyer was replaced with Raymond Berry, who wasn't as impressed with him. The Patriots cut him at the end of the 1985 preseason. But that's not the end of this story. Far from it, in fact, because Weathers would continue to play in the NFL. He spent the next four seasons as a member of the Cleveland Browns and had some absolutely critical touchdowns with the team. He scored the go-ahead 68-yard touchdown in a 1985 game against the Houston Oilers. Later that same year, he scored a 25-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter against the New York Giants that wound up propelling them into the postseason. And in a 1988 game against the Dallas Cowboys, with the Browns leading 17-14, Bernie Kosar hit Weathers for the dagger on a 36-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter to put the game out of reach. After bouncing around the league for a bit after that, going to Indianapolis, Kansas City, and Green Bay, Weathers was out of the NFL by the end of the 1991 season. And when you look back on it, the career that he had was absolutely incredible. Robert Weathers was a second-round draft pick in 1982. He did not slip through the cracks. He was a highly touted player who was projected to have a long career in the NFL by some. He only lasted five seasons and scored four touchdowns. Robert was out of the NFL after the 1986 season. Clarence, on the other hand, was an undrafted player who hadn't played tackle football in three years, 
and had given up on his football dreams for building mini golf courses. He lasted nine seasons and scored 12 touchdowns. Somehow, Clarence actually had a significantly better career than his brother, despite the two entering the league with completely different playing backgrounds. To put Clarence's career into some more improbable perspective, here's a list showing every single receiver to be drafted in the 1983 NFL Draft, which is the year that Clarence's career began. There were 42 receivers taken in the draft that year, with nine of them, including the two aforementioned Patriots receivers, being taken within the first three rounds. Clarence played in the NFL until 1991. Only five receivers of the 42 taken lasted in the league longer than that. For any player to play nine seasons in the NFL, they must have done something right, as that is a heck of a career. For an undrafted player to play nine seasons in the NFL and spend nearly a decade in professional football after slipping through the cracks is remarkable, and is already beating the odds. But for Clarence Weathers to play nine seasons in the NFL? For the guy who dropped out of college as a freshman? For the guy who had no aspirations of playing professional football and was just going up to Massachusetts to visit his family? And for the guy who was working on building putt-putt courses while neglecting tackle football entirely to play nine seasons in the NFL? I don't think I need to tell you how insane that is. If any Hollywood executives are watching this video for some reason, and you need a feel-good sports story, this is the one right here that has slipped under the radar that is right up your alley for the taking. Because for Clarence Weathers, what started out as helping his family turned into a decade in the NFL where he lived out his dream and where his life changed forever. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.